I am a female and I'm 28 years old. First of all, I have to say that English is not my first language, so sorry for any big mistakes. This story happened to me a few years ago before YouTube deleted direct messaging option. Back then I had a small vlogging channel and posted videos pretty frequently. I was not only having fun recording them, but I also started to make some money through my passion. The key thing here was how I was creating content with my channel. I got inspired by my favorite YouTuber Casey Neistat and started vlogging my daily life. I used to do a lot of stuff back then when I was in college. I love people and I love helping those in need. So I was doing a lot of volunteering work. You could say that I was... The girl that was everywhere type. I had a lot of friends and I still have. But after what happened to me back then... I stopped trusting people so much. I used to bring my camera with me every day and record up my life. I was recording the way from my home to our college too. And that's how anybody could figure out what my location was. But I was never hiding that and I didn't think it could harm me in any way. And it was a big mistake. Under every video I had a lot of positive comments and huge feedback. My channel was growing fast and I was so happy that my efforts finally paid off. A lot of bigger YouTubers have to deal with negative comments sometimes too. But in my case, I have never come across any serious hater or troll since the beginning of my channel that would affect me mentally. Until the summer four years ago, when I had to quit YouTube to recover mentally from the content of this story. Monday was my typical day. I ate my breakfast, packed my stuff to a school bag, took a camera, and went with my day. On the weekend I didn't have a lot of time to edit my recent vlog, so I decided to take my Mac laptop and do it in class. At 1am I arrived to my college and talked to a few friends before I sat down and turned on my computer. I used to open my browser and go onto YouTube to search for my favorite music there. Spotify wasn't really popular back then, especially in my country. So YouTube was the best way to find my favorite music. But when I logged on to my account and checked my notifications, I realized through all the comments under my recent videos, there was one private message from somebody. It wasn't actually the first time somebody texted me through this YouTube feature, but it was usually spam or advertisement. But this time it was different. From a profile picture I could make out that it was a really handsome guy. Here is what he wrote. Hey Amanda, I love your videos but I absolutely adore your beauty. I know it may seem crazy but I noticed that we live in the same city. So I thought maybe I could invite you out for some coffee? I think you have massive amount of guys writing to such a pretty girl like you. But I will take my chances. If you decide not to reply, that's cool. There was such a strange question and through a site like this there was even more shocking. For a second I thought I opened the wrong site. Back then I was single and despite many friends and parties I could never find myself a right man to date. That's why I opened an account on many dating sites and I thought I opened one of them. After a few seconds of confusion, I actually thought it was really nice and original from someone to text me like that. And he was from my city so why not try? I immediately texted him back and closed the browser for now. After morning class I opened my laptop again and saw his reply. From then on we texted back and forth till evening. He seemed to be a really nice guy. We had many things in common and we were talking for hours. I really like this guy. Finally he decided to exchange Facebook with me. I agreed without hesitation. At first I thought he may want something from me because of my YouTube fame and success. But that feeling faded away really fast. Everything about him was perfect. I was so excited when he finally asked me out to a cafe he mentioned in the first message. After Wednesday classes, I dressed myself in the best dress and put on my best makeup. At 7pm, I met him near a popular town cafe. He was way better looking than on his photos on Instagram and Facebook. He had dark stylish hair, a black jacket and trendy pants. When we met he even kissed me on the hand like an old school gentleman. But I actually loved it. It's so rare nowadays for men to treat women with such respect. 
in the beginning of our date, I felt full focus of attention on me from him. It was a lovely evening. One weird thing that I noticed was that he was obsessively asking me questions about my YouTube career and me as a YouTuber. When I tried to change the subject to more typical questions, he was quickly turning the conversation back to the YouTube topic. But I tried to ignore those accusations and continue with the night. After about an hour, he came up with the idea to watch some movies at my place. I'm sorry, but it's too fast for me. Maybe next time? I answered. Oh, come on. I want to see how famous YouTubers live. <laughs> I may disappoint you, but I live as every other ordinary person in this town. But I'm so curious where my favorite YouTuber lives. I bet it's some luxurious apartment in the city center. He became so pushy and was insisting on me agreeing to this idea. But he didn't break me and I refused to invite him to my home. He looked confused and a bit sad after this. We decided to take a walk to a local park and finally said goodbye. He was so charming at first, but then he became fixated about my YouTube self and acted like some psycho fan. I saw it in his eyes. They were wide open every time I was answering a specific question about my YouTube fame and success. But I decided to ignore those red flags and try to keep this relationship going. For the next few days, we texted a lot and sent each other Snapchat pictures and videos. When I tried to ask him something about his life, he referred everything to being my fan. It was a bit scary sometimes. He sent me a few pictures of him wearing all of my t-shirts and accessories from my recently established merchandise. Every day I was getting a Snapchat with screenshots of him watching my YouTube videos. He constantly reminded that he is my number one fan and that I'm the best YouTuber ever. Eventually our texting became really exhausting and everything came down to a YouTube topic. We met one more time to watch a movie in the cinema but I wasn't really enjoying it. Finally he became too comfortable with me and started to send me a really alarming image. He sent me a picture of his room. Walls were filled with printed screenshots of my face in every video on YouTube I ever posted. It was so creepy and disturbing. He also printed my face on his bed pillows. I became afraid of him and I didn't reply to those messages. I decided to talk with my friend. She recommended me to break up with him immediately. He seemed to be some psycho fan and will do only harm. And that's what I did. I texted him. I'm sorry, but it seems like it won't work between us. He replied, What do you mean? Don't do this to me. I love you. It was really hard for me because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but I couldn't hold it anymore. We decided to not contact each other, but I didn't block him on any social media. For the next week, I lived my daily life. Talking to a camera, uploading videos, studying in college and meeting friends. But one evening, I got a few Snapchat images from him that turned my life upside down. First one was an angry face in some dark basement. I could see a beam of light from a little window behind him and a text. How could you do this to me, bitch? He looked intoxicated and his face was all red. My heart started racing. I was startled and I didn't expect that he was that crazy. I tried to block him everywhere, but before I could, I got another few snapchats. He literally printed my face as some sex doll and tied her to a chair in assuming his basement. This time the text said, This will be you. I will get my revenge. In the next few images, he showed me his collection of torture weapons and equipment. I couldn't believe my eyes. I blocked him everywhere and threw my phone away. I cried the whole evening that day. I have never experimented such an anxiety attack and fear of my life. Next day I tried to forget about it and continued with my life. I didn't have energy to record that day so I gave myself a free day from YouTube. I was so sad and anxious in class that I decided to check my recent video comments to cheer myself up. But it was not over for him. He started to spam on her a few of my recent videos and wrote stuff like, I will kill you, bitch. I know exactly where you live and your way home. <laughs> I panicked. I tried to report him and block all of his fake accounts, but he was constantly creating new ones and threatening me. 
I couldn't take it anymore mentally. Every time when I was recording a video outside, my mind was tricking me into believing that he was waiting for me behind every street corner. I was slowly going insane. After a few sleepless nights, I decided to delete my YouTube channel. Since then, I recovered mentally and moved to a new city. I have never heard from him since. But I'm left with mental scars and buried dreams of becoming a big YouTuber. But I know that mental health is the most important thing in my life. Few years ago, I was a huge internet geek. But not in the typical sense of the word. I used to spend all of my evenings in my parents' basement where my room was and surfing through internet. I loved to search through all kinds of conspiracy theories. I was especially interested in deep web stories and the dark side of the internet. Looking back, I can't believe how crazy I was. I got really addicted to uncensored gore video sites once I discovered them. They usually include like livestream murder, suicide, car accidents, aftermath videos or public beheading. Believe me or not, I was actually enjoying them. I believe that it was like watching horror movies. People like to feel scared, so I was pushing myself to watch more and more dreadful videos to feel a bit more adrenaline in my boring life back then. But that's what I thought was the reason to watch them. Anyway, I had one friend, Jake. He was just as crazy as me. We were both sitting in the back of the class, sending each other links to really creepy sites. Sometimes it was some recent case of abducted people, sometimes weird sites with paranormal related cult. We were so into this stuff that we used to have our Friday evening rituals. We were both finishing school at 4pm and run through local woods to my home. Usually we ate some meal after school with my parents and went down to the basement locking the doors to the stairs. Then we lighted some candles around my computer and surfing through internet watching some really gore videos. The heavier the video was, the more fun we had. And of course, alcohol was included. One Friday in the summer, Jake and I were together watching some horror stuff. This time we were not in the mood to watch any real footage gore videos, so we decided to get drunk and search something on YouTube. We came across some posts on Reddit, in which a guy believed that you can find some good horror stuff really deep into the site. But it's hard because algorithm hides the bad stuff from people. Because it should be family friendly. So after a few articles like that, we searched through numerous videos on YouTube to find out if it was true. Mostly we found messed up videos like how to get rid of a body after a murder or allegedly ghost on CCTV camera vids. But the acting was so poor that we knew it was staged and created by people to scare some users for fun. But we also found some really scary channels there. After about 2 hours of searching, we came across a channel that had like about 500 videos. They were all really similar to each other. You could hardly make anything out of the video, but there was probably some girl in a black dress. You could see a red light behind her and that was it. Her face was covered by some kind of mask. The mask was smiling. On every video, she was threatening the viewers that she would kill their families and torture them to death. On some, she was showing knives or guns. It was so creepy. I felt like she was actually talking to me, and she could see me through my webcam. It sent chills down my spine. It was crazy how someone had time and will to upload more than 500 videos like that. Someone's head was really messed up. After a few videos, we had enough and quickly closed the browser tab. Next, we run into this horror deep web game let's play. This game is called Sad Satan. We read that it was previously available only on deep web, but the link was leaked to normal internet. It was a really graphic horror game. We got so hyped that we immediately searched through internet for the download link. I didn't thought I was making the worst mistake of my life. It took us a while to find a proper link, especially after 10 shots of vodka. After downloading, I unpacked the zip file and opened the application. It looked like the same game, but it wasn't something quite right on the main screen. There wasn't even a playing button anywhere. Being quite intoxicated, 
I could make out only four buttons. Photos, videos, info, and upload. What the hell? Where is the game? I asked Jake. I don't know, man. Maybe let's check other buttons? I clicked on photos and my jaw dropped. The first few seconds, Jake and I were paralyzed. The photos showed children. But there weren't just pictures like from any family photo album. The children were naked, and the photographer was obviously focusing his attention on intimate parts of the human body. Girls on the photos were obviously been beating and had many wounds and scars on their bodies. Some of them had dog collars on their neck. And some were wearing provocative outfits. They looked drugged and half concussious. It was definitely child porn. We didn't even try to check the video folder. I was seconds from throwing up. I clicked the X button as fast as I could and deleted the application immediately. We accidentally downloaded illegal child porn. I couldn't even speak a word. Jake and I looked at each other without saying anything. My heart was racing because I knew that forever there will be a mark that I downloaded this file with a legal program. I could still see those poor boys and girls, probably abducted and deported outside of the United States to act in porn videos and being raped by their abducted co-workers. I knew this will hunt me forever. The worst thing was that those kinds of stuff happens in the world and we still can't do anything about it. After a few minutes, Jake said that he had enough. He picked his stuff and he left. I couldn't sleep that night, and for a few next ones after. When I checked the site the next day where I found the link to report it, it was no longer there. I think we were lucky or unlucky enough to download the file before it was taken down. I was obsessively afraid that one day the police would visit my house or some other secret service. I was just so scared for my safety. It turned out that the file had viruses and it broke down my computer. I had to justify myself to my parents what I had done to lead applications on my PC to disappear from my operation system. Fortunately, they believed that I just downloaded some torrent game with a virus. I realized that the repaired men could find any traces of illegal porn on my PC. Luckily, they didn't find anything, and everything is good with my PC since then. No single officer came to my house, so they didn't call the police station behind my back like I used to believe. Jack and I, Jack and I changed since that night and tried to forget about the situation. Remember, internet is full of good as well as really bad content. Watch out what you download. This story was the biggest disappointment of my teen life. I still regret what I did till this day. I used to own a really big gaming channel back then. I had been into YouTube since I got my own computer. I didn't even have money to buy myself a PC good enough for recording or editing videos, so I had to beg my parents for almost 3 months. I loved watching stars on this site like PewDiePie or Jacksepticeye, and they inspired me to make my own channel in my native language. I was watching them all day and night. So I had massive knowledge on what users on this platform really wanted. When I started this channel, it was really hard at first to get any subscribers. But since I knew how to edit good videos and record trending games, I got picked up by the YouTube algorithm really fast. From then on, I was growing like crazy. I was slowly getting recognized by kids in my country, even though I wanted to keep my privacy and hid behind a mask. This was my first mistake. Slowly, some popular brands started to send me offers for advertisements and deals. I even was thinking of making my own merch. If you're curious, my channel blew up on Minecraft content. My community loved me and they were sending me a lot of love in the comment section under my videos, and that I was helping them getting through a hard day. I felt so fulfilled at such a young age, but I was also very naive and trusted people too much. My parents were so proud of me. They knew how much this career meant to me and they were cheering me up every single time I got a hate or negative comment. They tried to help me as much as they could and always supported me. Every video I tried to be better and better. I almost gave up on school for YouTube 
because it was not only my passion, but I started to make some money out of it. Of course, the time I started on YouTube, money was not big. But with time, I started to earn more money than some people with a regular job. One day when I came home from school, I decided to make some new Minecraft episodes and prepare the script. I randomly opened my mail to check if I had any new messages. This was one mail from some software company. It was a brand new deal with a new company that made easy to learn editing software. I got really interested because I had a few deals before and they were paying a lot for a single advertisement. I was always open for any business opportunity, especially for some tool that will help me personally speed up my working process. I replied that I am very interested in this cooperation and got back to editing. Later that day we exchanged a few emails and even made a call. They seem to be really nice people and have a great vision of their product. They showed me a detailed presentation on their screen and showed the offer with the price for an advertisement. We ended the call and I texted them, I had to think it over. Next day I woke up and decided to agree on the deal. They were really happy to hear that and immediately prepared papers for me to sign. When all was done, I had to make the next step and download their program. The weird thing was that they sent me some zip file through mail. Not as usually when I had brand deals through their official site. But I didn't think anything of it. Because I was only thinking about those few thousand dollars I will get after this deal is over. Everything went good with downloading, but I couldn't install the file on my PC. An error of some kind was popping up. I was trying different ways to install it. Restarting my computer and trying other ways, but it didn't work out. So I called them, but they didn't answer. Next, I emailed them that I couldn't open the file. They replied with apologies and a message that they probably sent me a broken file. They promised to send me a proper one tomorrow. It was kinda strange. Why can't they just send me a proper one right now? I said to myself. Besides, it's ridiculous that they don't even have an official site or just send me the link right away. Usually I track brands like that online, but they offered me so much money that I got a little greedy and forget about any precautions. But I left it alone and got back to doing what I love most, which was playing Minecraft and recording new episodes. But the thought of this incident didn't let me to be calm. They didn't even call me back and suddenly cared less about me. I didn't receive an answer from them, so I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning, but still, I didn't get any single word from them. I tried to contact them by mail, but they didn't reply for the whole day. Finally, I tried to call them, but I couldn't. It seemed like they blocked me. Okay, I guess that means the deal was over. They just left without a word. I was a bit sad because I already decided what I will spend the money on from the deal. I needed a new accessory for my computer and a new chair. But I tried to forget about the case and focus all my attention on school that day. I did amazing on an exam and learned a lot. When I came back from school, I showed my parents my exam results. They were so happy and greeted me with delicious dinner. After I ate my meal, I went upstairs to my room and wanted to check my today's YouTube stats. But I had a problem. Logging in. I thought it was just a side error and maybe I put the wrong password. I restarted my Wi-Fi and double checked my password I wrote in my notebook. Still, there was this error. I was getting more and more irritated. For the next half hour, I tried to enter my account and I couldn't. Then I decided to enter the email and write to YouTube support for help and change the password for a new one. To my horror, I couldn't enter my email also, this time with wrong password information box. I slowly started to connect the dots, but I didn't want to acknowledge it. Then I remembered that I still had this file on my computer and rapidly scanned it with my antivirus. It detected some malware. It detected some malware. I ran to the living room and told my parents everything. They called a friend who was a really good IT specialist, and he came as fast as he could to help me. He told me that it was some kind of keylogger I installed initially on my PC. It tracked every movement, and when I was logging into my YouTube account, it sent all data to the attacker's computer. I knew it was them. They tricked me into believing they are some company and gave me this file with malware. All that we could do is call the police. The police didn't try to help us as much as we wanted. They just had better things to do than search for some virtual account thieves. Besides, 
they found out that the thieves used Tor browsers and VPN to hide their identity. I was fighting a lot, constantly visiting the police station for any news. I even wrote emails to my own stolen mail and begged them to please give me back my dreams. But they didn't show no mercy and didn't reply to a single email. Every day I checked my channel to see what they were uploading. For the first two months, there were no new videos. They then tried to force my fans to watch some random series of a different game but without my voice or cool commentary. I was incognito as a person so I couldn't start a new channel and rebuild the audience. Back then I had no other social media pages to gather fans to, but at the end it worked out all okay. After a year I started fresh with completely new content for a YouTube channel and I had gathered a few thousand subs already. When I checked my channel recently, it didn't exist anymore. So I think they just grabbed all the leftover money and got rid of any proof. I would have had millions of subscribers already and probably be on the top of my country. But I was stupid back then and I got too greedy. It left me with many sleepless nights and huge depression. But now I am stronger and more careful. YouTube is a business like any other. So losing a channel is heartbreaking. Remember. Trust only yourself and always double check everything before downloading something.